black student punished for defending a girl from a racist bully. Why would she be punished? Well, let's see. Colby Barker, 17 year old black high school student from Missouri. I spent some time in Missouri. I'll reserve what's floating at the top of my mind. Suspended for seven days for standing up against a known bully who was threatening to sexually violate one of his female friends. But he said the bully was not disciplined despite having called him an ugly N-word, not to mention having sexually harassed girls for years. However, district spokeswoman said the other boy had been disciplined as well and is no longer at the school. That only happened after Barker began a social media campaign about the incident. You see how that works? Our friends, uh, Atlanta Black Star with the details. With millions watching and many people benefiting from this program called Indisputable, we just need 1% of the viewers to become a paid member so we can continue to bring this content to you. Now back to the show. Let's tell you what, what happened here um, and give you some of the background, shall we? Here's what Barker said about the bully. Barker also said that CN Flown is part of a group chat with others. They usually flock together in numbers, these bullies, these racists do, so that's not surprising. Other males who, um, well, let's just say they like to think alike and express themselves. Um, that's not surprising to you, is it? Yeah, is it all? Uh, that's kind of what they do in these instances. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. So let's give you more here as I bring up the comments. And again, just defending another student is kind of what we would teach our children to do. Isn't that what we would teach our children to do? If you have a son or a daughter, hey, stand up for other people. Other people aren't like that though. So these other males who collect nude photos of female students, charming bunch, which uh, they use against them. He distributes girls nudes, he sends nudes, and if girls get mad, he leaks the nudes to the school. Wow, wow, there's, I, there's already a crime. And I'm no lawyer, but you know, I like to play one. They have an entire gallery of girls nudes. They blackmail them into doing whatever they want. Uh, again, I'm not a lawyer, but I'm already, in other words, Rico, Rico. Okay, I think this is like a massive case, conspiracy and the like. Uh, he says what the school has done is now affecting his potential to earn scholarships for college. Barker, who is a senior at Park High School, Kansas City, and plays on the school football team, said the suspension is affecting his potential to earn football scholarships to college. My suspension is overshadowing my senior year because no scouts want to come and see me play, Barker said in a telephone interview with Atlanta Black Star. It has really put me at a disadvantage compared to other kids on the team. Barker would like to hire an attorney, but it would have to be under a pro bono agreement since he is currently homeless, unhoused and living among friends because of a dysfunctional family environment. He's launched this petition to gain support around the suspension. We're gonna include the link here in the video. And you see it there, pleading his case as if he doesn't have other things to do. I don't know how much worse this story can get, Yes, And I want you to weigh in and just kind of take us through your thinking here. Don't these schools get it by now? Or don't they have to? Maybe they do get it, but they just don't care because there's not really any consequences. Nobody really loses a job to do the right thing. It's just, well, it's insane to me. Yeah, and I, I guess school is kind of like a microcosm of the world, or they try to portray that it that way. But, you know, back to school season was always so much fun when I was younger. But school started, what, just like last week or the week before? And we've already been hearing the most horrendous, sometimes even deadly stories about kids going back to school. And it's really sad. Like whenever I hear stories like this, I always just get really sad for the youth and, you know, their opportunities that are being stamped on by by various out things outside of their own control. Um, I know that there's always going to be a social aspect to going to school. That's where we learn how to interact with others, with other types of people, with the world. So that's always going to be a thing. But having to deal with things like this, most adults don't even know how to handle incidents like this one. And the adults in these stories that we're covering on this show today, they have been disappointing in ways 
uh, that they're, they're just failing to support the students. In a perfect world, students would be able to go to school, they would learn, and they would get set up for college and for their futures, and they would make some memories, some good, some bad. But the kids in school today are dealing with a whole mess of things that I never had to deal with. I graduated in 2006. It was right before the iPhone came out. It was really a different time to go to school. <clears throat> And the way adult political issues have infiltrated schools these days is really doing these kids <laughs> such a disservice. They're not being taught basic skills because they're having to worry about things that, like I said, previous generations just simply did not have to deal with. And I think that is such a such a disservice to them, such a crime against them. Just the way that they're going to start, they're going to go into the world at a disadvantage already because whether the public school system or the adults in their life have failed them. Yeah, I'm just disgusted because I don't, you have a 17 year old, right? Unhoused, so-called family dysfunction, right? And still knows what to do. And then you have these adults who are so ignorant, tone deaf, daft, if you will. A 17 year old kid knows this isn't right. You're bullying someone here. And now their response is, yeah, we're going to bully you. The system, the school is going to bully the protector. Make it make sense. I'll give you the last word. Yeah, it, it's almost like people are just so concerned with the overall implications, like, oh, this is going to get, get out in the press. Oh, this is going to go viral on social media. This is going to make us, the adults, look bad or make the school look bad. All these different things that are going on, all these different considerations, but nobody is actually considering this kid who needs help in the world and he's doing his best to go to school, get his education, maybe get a chance to go to college. And these adults for seemingly pretty petty reasons or just because these adults are not big enough to do the right thing. Uh, they're going to sabotage this kid's future. And it really is unfair. And I really hope that he gets the support that he deserves to have in this situation. Yeah. And you know what? It's not like it's happening in a vacuum. I've said that was the last word, but I got to say this. They know that this this kid has an opportunity, this young man, to have a scholarship. OK, an unhoused kid. I'm going to keep saying that because I think it just is an added um, offense by this school, the district, those involved. They know that this kid has a chance to better himself, perhaps his family. And get what he should be promised in this world, this country. And yet they're standing their ground here. I know we cover lots of these stories, yes, but I just, I just don't understand if people have empathy, a heart, um, or maybe they do when the people involved look like them. Yeah, and I, I think also it, it goes beyond just empathy and having a heart. It, doing the right thing, knowing what the right thing is and doing the right thing are two different things, right? And it takes some sort of bravery to be able to do the right thing, especially when the right thing is very difficult to do. And in this case, the kid is the one who did the right thing. And I really hope he doesn't regret his actions because he did what he should have done. And the adults really are, they should be there to protect the students and they're simply not doing that. That's their job and they can't even do that much. No, they can't. And I'm just, you know, looking at this and knowing that we have got to keep, we've got to keep following up. Mm -hmm. because I think that these people have got to be called out because what they're doing is really teaching him a lesson. Boy, how dare you buck the system? We'll treat people, especially people of color, any way we choose. And you bet it happens in every workplace. Come on, you know that. You've seen it happen in every work, not here, okay? I love mm -hmm. TYT. It's just why I always will show up because I just think that this place is different. But most places... This bully in this state, this systemic racism and targeting is tolerated. This uh, retaliation, it's um, tolerated and even encouraged. Gang activity is what I like to call it. We'll move on, but trust and respect that Indisputable will keep an eye on this one. And we will, and I hope you all weigh in too, make sure that uh, this young man at least has, has his voice heard.